Roses don't look after themselves, but once they're established, yeah, it's a, you, if you want a nice kind of show, there's a little bit of work at them, but anyone can have a rose in a pot or in their garden. So I would say everyone's got to have a rose. We're obviously quite unique here at Hever Castle. We have a rose garden here with over 4,000 roses. You have to sort of prune them twice a year. Obviously you want a lovely display of flowers, so lots of water if it's dry, and they're sort of very hungry. So if you have lots of your own compost, that can be put round the roses. So not really high maintenance, but you need to sort of look after them, and they will then kind of um, you know, come back with beautiful blooms for you. This is actually Rosa Hever Castle, and that was actually bred for us many years ago. It was launched at the Royal Horticultural Society Hampton Court Flower Show, and would you believe Dame Judy Dench was the one that assisted in launching the rose for us. As you can see, it is a beautiful deep red, sort of carmine colour. It's open, so the bees and the wildlife can get in there to pollinate it and it has a wonderful sort of golden yellow stamen in the middle. And the real key thing for a rose, it's been bred, it's sort of disease resistant, and that will continue to flower for months during the summer. Look at this vibrant, really shocking orange. This is called Rosa Super Trooper. And I don't have to mention after one of the famous ABBA songs. And that really is a Super Trooper to look at. The best time to plant roses is in the, we call it the dormant season. So in about November time, the roses sort of go to sleep. They lose their leaves, they don't grow, and then they start to grow in March. So then is the best time to buy your roses. You can buy them on mail order, uh, lots of garden centres, and that's the cheapest time. They call them bare root. So they just dug up, you'll get your rows, you get the roots, you get no soil, and then you can plant them in the garden. They're much, much cheaper, but you can go to your garden centres and nurseries now in the growing season. Potted roses are fine, but you're going to pay a lot of money. So ideally, a good tip, wait till November, look through the catalogues and then buy them then, you'll save a fortune. Pruning, normally we're talking about some hybrid tea roses, which are a rose bush that has one big flower on the stem and floribundas that have one stem with lots of little flowers on it. The ideal time for pruning um, is two prunes, one in November, and we call it the winter prune. And we really just chop it down about a third in your garden. That just stops, if there's any strong winds during the winter and bad weather, it stops the rose from going backwards and forwards and it can damage the roots. And then in March time, you want to be really, really kind of severe with your pruning. Literally with a rose, you will cut them down. You'll see the little leaf shoots in March. You cut them down to about five buds above ground level. Cut it back. Anything in there that's dead, dying, or if you've got any crossover stems, cut them all out. And you want to goblet so the airflow runs through them. And you know if you planted the rose correctly, once you've pruned it in March, you sit down. If you can sit in the middle of that rose without anything sticking in your backside, you know you pruned the rose properly. Roses have lots of flowers each year, and for them to produce flowers like us, they need lots of food for the energy. So we feed them twice a year. We kind of feed them in March time, once it's had the prune. Two things you can get from your nurseries or garden centre. It's boxed up as rose food, a little fertiliser that you sprinkle round the rose. Make sure you do it in a little circle around the base of the rose. You don't want the fertiliser to touch the leaves because it can scorch it. And then also, on top of that, we then kind of give it a, a slow release fertiliser. Most roses would like some sunshine. Full sun, not too bad, but a sort of a mixture uh, full sun and half shade, but then on the other hand, there are some roses that actually like shade as well. So whatever part of your garden, there is a rose for that area. To keep them performing and flowering, you need a dead head which simply is, once the flower has finished, you'll know when the flower's finished, the petals fall down, you get your nice sharp secateurs and nip it between the spent flower and the first leaf shoot, cut it there, and then cutting that, that will give the leaf node their strength and another shoot will come out. If you leave the flowers, dead flowers on there, the rose will think it's gonna die and it will produce seed and it won't produce flowers. So every time the flower is finished, you cut it off and you can guarantee it will keep flowering. So that is, a, that is a, probably one of the most important things of good maintenance for a rose. So it's a rose for every, every idea, every part of your garden and every need.
Here at Hever Castle, we have a very formal rose garden. So it's an old fashioned rose garden, purely roses. That's how we like it. But in your own garden, you can plant roses within a herbaceous border. So if you've got a herbaceous border, some perennials, you can plant a rose in there to kind of break it up. If you've got three or four roses, by all means, you can plant some plants at the bottom, some geraniums. There's lots of plants that will distract aphids, little insects. So you could plant some little marigolds around it and that will keep the little bugs away. Really, I think with a rose, you can have a rose on its own, a rose in the middle of plants, you can be as creative as you like.